Was Meatloaf's health really so bad that he collapsed on stage multiple times? Who was the greatest loss of Meatloaf's life? And did this outgoing showman have trouble making friends off stage? Meatloaf was very open with the fact that he had a traumatic childhood, blaming a lot of that on his father. Orvis Wesley a day. In 2013, he told The Big Issue, My dad was an alcoholic who would disappear for three or four days at a time. During those times, Meatloaf would often accompany his mother, Wilma, a day, when she'd go looking for him at different bars. What made matters worse was that, according to Meatloaf, Orvis was a violent drunk who frequently beat his young son. Despite the abuse, Meatloaf eventually forgave his dad, explaining to the big issue, Alcohol is a disease. I don't hold a grudge and I love my father, and I take responsibility for my own actions as an adult. As far as I'm concerned, my dad has no part in my personality. When I get mad, it's not my dad's fault, it's mine. Meatloaf had a strained relationship with his father, not only because Orvis Wesley Day was an abusive alcoholic, but also because his dad apparently tried to kill him. The rock star revealed that it happened when he was 18 after his mother's funeral, alleging to Rolling Stone, I rolled off the bed just as he put that knife right in the mattress. I fought for my life. Apparently, I broke three ribs and his nose, and left the house barefoot in a pair of gym shorts and a t-shirt. After that incident, though, the singer reportedly didn't see much reason to stay in Texas and moved to Los Angeles to begin his music career. If life at home wasn't bad enough for a young meatloaf, he didn't have it much easier at school, where he was bullied by other kids for being overweight. The rock star allegedly already weighed 240 pounds by the time he hit 7th grade, recalling to Rolling Stone in 2018, quote, Oh man, I was tormented. Meatloaf once told Blender magazine about a commercial that supposedly ruined his life, saying, Levi's had a commercial on the radio that said, Poor fat Marvin can't wear Levi's, and I was fat. It nearly destroyed me. I'm still not over it. I've always been the poor fat Marvin that can't wear Levi's. Eventually, in high school, Meatloaf put his larger stature to good use by playing football. He told The Big Issue, At the age of 16, I was preoccupied with American football because I got to hit people. I took my anger out. Unfortunately, Meatloaf would continue to have problems with his weight for most of his life, often fluctuating on different diets. Meatloaf was understandably devastated by the death of his mother, Wilma Aday, with whom he had a close relationship. He recalled to the Daily Mail, My mother taught English and I happened to be in her class. She would say, You've got to come to a higher standard than everyone else. He also credited his mother for inspiring his love of music. Sadly, Meatloaf didn't have too many memories of her, telling the big issue, My mother was ill with breast cancer for so long. That's a lot of my childhood that I've just blocked out. His mother's death hit Meatloaf hard, he explained. My mother died when I was 18, and that's something maybe a psychologist would help me deal with that. According to the late singer, Meatloaf lived a life of danger. He told The Telegraph in 2016, I've fallen three stories, been in car wrecks, near misses, emergency landings, so many times I should have died. One of those close calls in particular happened in his sophomore year of high school, when he was supposedly hit in the head with a 12-pound shot put. He recalled to contact music, There was no way anyone thought it would be tossed that far, but the guy who hit me was the champion of Dallas. Rolling Stone reports that he often credited that injury with giving him his vocal prowess. Meatloaf also said that he'd, quote, been in eight car wrecks. One rollover crash left him especially shaken up, and he supposedly refused to sit in the same seat he'd been in during that accident again. But Meatloaf apparently didn't have better luck with planes either, as he related to Ultimate Classic Rock. I've been in a plane that didn't have front landing gear when we came down. I've been in a plane that lost its hydraulics on landing, two other planes, one private and one normal that the wind hit us so hard the wing hit the runway. Meatloaf had more than his fair share of serious health problems over the years before he reportedly died from COVID-19 complications. In 2011, he allegedly had a vocal cord hemorrhage after previously straining his voice years earlier. He told the Daily Mail, I always want to sing. I had a swollen vocal cord and protruding blood vessels, so it was a struggle. He got into more graphic detail with contact music, saying, I was spitting blood every night on stage. It was like, you cut your finger really bad and it's bleeding everywhere. That's how blood was coming out of my throat. Then there were his back problems, which he said resulted in significant surgery. He explained to the mirror, The doctor said I had a little cyst, but that it had grown and was pushing against the nerves. When the doctor opened up my back to remove it, it was almost like emergency surgery. There are now little nuts and bolts in there. 
According to The Mirror, Meatloaf's first onstage injury happened back in 1978, when he jumped off a high platform during a show and broke his leg. For the remainder of that particular tour, the musician used a wheelchair to move around the stage. There were also incidents where Meatloaf would collapse during performances. While performing in 2011, Meatloaf ended up flat on his back after having an asthma attack. In 2016, it was dehydration that led Meatloaf to faint once more mid-concert. Despite his super successful Bat Out of Hell album in 1977, Meatloaf had major financial problems. Things got so bad that, in the late 1980s, the rock legend had to declare bankruptcy. He later revealed to the Daily Mail, Everyone thinks it made me rich, and it's still humiliating because I declared bankruptcy and everybody said, oh, he spent all his money. But that wasn't the case. He alleged, I made almost nothing. The record company said it never made a profit. It also probably didn't help that, as Meatloaf told The Guardian, at one point, he had about 45 lawsuits against him, which amounted to $80 million. In terms of why he kept getting sued, he explained that his record label and songwriting partner's former manager were, quote, playing games with him. He explained, I had 45 lawsuits totaling $80 million thrown at me. It was a game, and the only way to stop them playing their game was to declare a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, because every time we'd get one case dismissed, they'd throw another one at me. And everybody thinks I had all this money, but I didn't, because CBS did not pay my royalties until 1997. I got paid the royalties for Bat Out of Hell 20 years later. Being broke was hard on Meatloaf and his family. He recalled to Rolling Stone back in 1993. It was horrible. The kids took a beating. My wife would try to write a check at the grocery store, and they wouldn't take it. Luckily, Meatloaf was able to bounce back financially after his popular album Bat Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell, dropped that same year. While Meatloaf had a complicated relationship with his songwriting partner Jim Steinman, he took his death very hard. The two did have a few riffs, with Steinman telling Rolling Stone in 1993, I spent seven months trying to make a follow-up to Bat Out of Hell with him, and it was an infernal nightmare. He was pretty much losing his mind. There were also multiple lawsuits between the two of them, but Meatloaf insisted it wasn't what it was made out to be in the press. He dished, Our managers sued each other, but my heart never sued Jim, and I know Jim's heart never sued me. That made it very painful for Meatloaf to process Steinman's death from kidney failure in 2021. The singer admitted to the outlet, I don't want to die, but I may die this year because of Jim. He continued to express how important their relationship was, saying, we belonged heart and soul to each other. We didn't know each other, we were each other. Meatloaf also took to Facebook to pay tribute to Steinman in his own way, posting a series of photos of them together and writing, Coming here soon, my brother Jimmy. Fly, Jimmy Fly. Music producer Pete Waterman also opened up about how Steinman's death impacted Meatloaf, saying on Good Morning Britain, It's like when your partner does go, it takes a part of you away. When you're a singer, you need a songwriter, and if you can't write yourself, Look for somebody in perfect team. It seems that Meatloaf didn't really have a lot of friends because of his career. He revealed to the Irish News in 2020, I've worked my entire life, so I didn't have time for friends, except for people I worked with. I didn't hang out a lot. His songwriting partner, Jim Steinman, was one of the few people that he was able to connect with. Meatloaf told Rolling Stone the following year, I've always been with Jim, and Jim has always been with me. It also appears that the singer had high standards for others. He told Classic Rock magazine, I want a person to take pride in his job. I will never be lazy a day in my life, and I'm prepared to tell someone to their face if they are. Additionally, Meatloaf said he had social anxiety, telling the Regina Leader Post in 2010 that because of that, I don't even go anywhere. I lead a boring life. I never meet anybody much in a social situation because when I go into a social situation, I have no idea what to do. However, even when it came to some work events, Meatloaf admitted, I'm so nervous, so scared. I don't want to walk down a red carpet. Following Meatloaf's rise to fame in the 1970s, the Heaven Can Wait singer initially struggled with his rock star status. According to the US Sun, he'd overdo it to the point of needing oxygen following a concert. Offstage, he was living the typical rocker life, trashing hotel rooms and using hard drugs. Meatloaf later reflected, quote, I was the perfect monster. That lifestyle, combined with a strained vocal cord issue, led Meatloaf to eventually have what he called an emotional breakdown, for which he drank alcohol to cope. As he explained in a 1993 interview with People, 
I didn't know how to deal with what was going on around me. I didn't want the responsibility anymore. However, because of therapy and his supportive wife at the time, Leslie Edmonds, he eventually felt unbelievably happy taking time away from the spotlight and moving to Connecticut. Sadly though, Edmonds and Meatloaf ended up divorcing in 2001 after 22 years of marriage. While that was another tragic blow to the star, he found love again with Deborah Gillespie whom he was married to from 2007 up until his death. She said in a statement to People, From the day we met, he was my world and I loved him. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Administration's 24-7 National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP. That's 1-800-662-4357.